What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Skywalker the Jedi here. Coming back at y'all with another one, yo. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. I'm about to do my Doctor Strange spoiler review, y'all. For real, for real. I went and saw it last night. You know what I'm saying? Um, saw it at the Chinese Theater. Hi, Max. Matter of fact, if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm probably going to add it on there. Um, Kevin Feige, Sam Raimi, and like Danny Elfman, and like some other um, people from the production team, like came through my theater, yo. It, it was like super unexpected, yo. You know, because they usually have somebody to come out and announce the movies and everything. But the guy just walked out there and he's like, yeah, you know, welcome to the Chinese theater or whatever, yada, yada, yada. And, um, Here's uh, Kevin Feige. He was like, what? Yeah, everybody, everybody like started scrambling to pull their phones out. And it was crazy, yo. Uh, it was like super dope, you know, getting to see Kevin Feige and Sam Raimi and all them, you know, um, at the start of the movie. So, super dope. But let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. I saw Doctor Strange, man. Um, yo, I had a dope time. I had a great time. Um, Yo, I will say this. Um, I think that I was kind of expecting a little bit much, too much in terms of like some cameos that I was going to be getting, right? And um, things like that. But with that being said, I think this is a really dope movie, yo. Um, I, had a I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I do think that a lot of this movie is was cut, man. I think a good chunk of this movie got cut. And I could feel it. I could feel it throughout the movie, like in certain spots. Um, and so I'm totally pro release the Raimi cut. You know, I gotta keep it a buck. I gotta keep it a buck, yo. I, I'm actually interested in what that cut looked like because um, I think that I'll probably like that even more um, than I than I liked this version, right? Um, and it's funny. Cause um, I was just watching Scoop Center, and you know, shout out to Sil and Mikey, you know, and I just heard Sil say that you know he feel like this got cut down because of the Batman, and you know, I had a theory, and I was yo, I figured that shit out when they announced that it was gonna be you know two hours, right? Because if you guys remember, um. Before, you know, this Batman movie came out, right? They had that movie slated to be longer than that. I think it was like two and a half hours almost, right? Or two hours and 40, something like that. Pretty much, you know, we're hearing about this um, this 35 minutes being cut, right? But um, yeah, 35 extra minutes, right? That's what, you know, we was hearing. And then, right, when the Batman came out and did what it did, right? They, you know, then the official runtime kind of like redropped right and then it was like two hours and whatever right so you know i really think that that was in direct response to the batman kind of like not you know living up to expectations that it was set to hit right i mean you know people can say whatever they want to say and i know this is a dr strange video and we're talking about the batman but i think that you know this is quite the time to speak on it because you know, I think that that movie affected Doctor Strange, yo. Disney and Marvel are very smart. If you look over the years, they've kind of done the opposite of what DC was doing, right? Every time DC would F up, right, Disney would be like, oh, yeah, you know, we're going to double down on whatever they're not doing, right? So, you know, it, it, it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, you have this one movie that comes out right and it's three hours and it's kind of dragging you know and everybody's like you know kind of having problems with it and it's underperforming up to expectations and then you know i could see why they be like look we got to cut some of this out of this movie we got to trim the fat we got to get some more screenings you see what just happened on the other side of the street you know what i'm saying like nah let's not fall for that same trap so i do think that that might have had an impact on this movie yo but um overall yo i liked it man i thought wanda was dope um yo the kills in this movie yo oh my goodness wanda was a beast yo wanda's a savage 
man, when she asked Reed Richards if his children's mother was still alive, and he said, yeah, and she said, good, because <laughs> they'll have somebody to raise them. Woo wee. It gave me chills, yo. She did the Illuminati dirty, man. Like, yo, man, see, and, and you know what? Speaking on the Illuminati, I feel like that's kind of, you know, one thing that was kind of holding back, right? Because we didn't get a lot. I mean, we got, you know, some, but we didn't get a lot, man. Like, you know, there's all these Ultron bots there, right? And, you know, where they come from? Why is there no Iron Man there, right? And then, you know, there were certain shots where it looked like there was some room for more people, you know, and they kind of had their, you know, rejig the situation, right? So, I don't know, yo, but, you know, I thought Wong was dope. Um, Wong had me laughing a few times, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and um, he shows a lot of emotion, right? And I like how, you know, um, he kind of, earns um Stephen Strange's respect by the end of the movie as like Sorcerer Supreme right you know because Wong was really putting in work um yo but you know hey Benedict Cumberbatch was great you know what I'm saying like I I thought he was super dope you know um his fight scenes was dope I felt like um his acting as the different strangers was top tier right um I feel like, you know, everybody kind of came to put in work. Sam Raimi showed up, right? Sam Raimi showed up in a big way, man. Um, you know, there's a lot of scary parts in this movie, yo. There's a lot of parts that, like, really, really creep me out. You know what I'm saying? Like, really, really had me, like, uh, 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 you know, a little uneasy. Especially the way Wanda just dispatches of the Illuminati like that. Like, she's a savage. Straight savage. She looked at Black Bolt and was like, what mouth? <laughs> oh man. Yo, I had I had a lot of fun with this movie, yo. Even though I did feel like you know man, look, if you wanna know what 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 one of my biggest problems with this movie is though, I'm not gonna lie to you. Danny Elfman, man. Danny Elfman, like, look, you know, I mean, it was cool seeing him at the little thing last night, you know what I'm saying, because I guess he's a part of, you know, Hollywood history, right, you know, Batman 89 was a long time ago, man, that was, that was a long time ago, you know, we, when, what's up with the recent Danny Elfman, he was like, he was like, a, he was probably the worst thing about this movie, I'm keeping it up, but, like, I was sitting there like, yo, what, what is this? You know what I'm saying? At certain points. But, um, yeah. You know, I felt like um, the twist and everything was cool. Um, I didn't expect to see Charlize Theron in this movie or be entering into the MCU at all, right? And so that goes to show that they obviously still got more surprises for people, right? Um, and, you know, I just... Man, um... I forget the the actress's name who played America Chavez, um, but no, she did great as well. Um, you know, I feel like everybody came to play. I feel like everybody came with their A game and they showed up ready to work. Um, you know, um, everybody. She would tell Edgia Four as Baron Mo as Baron Mordo. You know, he was super dope. Like. I liked everybody, but Danny Elfman gotta go, yo. I can't get jiggy with this, yo. I, like, I can't get jiggy with that. And release the Raimi cut, man. Like, this movie obviously was cut down, y'all. Like, significantly, right? And just think about that. Like, that's really, you know, in terms of impact on, like, uh, outlook of a movie, right? Um, that's BBS, yo. That's BBS. Theatrical versus Ultimate Edition. Right? I mean, I don't know. Like, you know, um, look, 
in terms of this whole MCU, DC, EU thing, man, like, it's crazy. I'm not going to lie, right? Being in a packed theater and seeing, like, these Marvel fans be like, I mean, well, look, I'm a Marvel fan, too. But you guys know, these MCU fans, I'm not a real big MCU fan. But, you know, um, you, have a, you, have, you have a lot of MCU fans out there, right? But, you know, being in, like, a packed theater, right, and you know seeing the thor trailer and they're going crazy and i'm sitting there like oh my god like they going nuts for this right but you know i'm happy that these people are getting what they want yo like they're getting fed right when the marvel credits roll they're going crazy right you know i want to go crazy when i see Zack snyder's name back on the big screen right Cause I, you know, I would do that too. You know, I'd be cheering at some of the credits and stuff too, right? I would, like I, I want that same treatment, yo. I want that same love. They even have it, you know. The, the MCU has like applause moments built into their movies. Like, like let's keep it a buck. We all be seeing them. We all seeing, and this movie got them too. Right, got multiple, hey, pause for applause po points, right? Like, oh my God. You know, like when Reed Richards and all them come on the screen and they show Captain Marvel, like, you know, come on. Like, you know, that those, those moments are totally like, oh my God, let's like pause the action so that the audience can go crazy, right? That's why they usually don't even have them speak for a, a little bit, right? You know, because if they did, you would be, oh, look, it's fireworks going on in the back. You know what I'm saying? We lit. <laughs> but yeah, um, nah, just like, you know, they have all this stuff built into their movies and it feeds their fan base, man. And their fan base reacts to it. And I want that same treatment, yo. Like, I want to be able to feel that energy, right? To be in the big IMAX theater, right? Like, waiting to watch... You know what I'm saying? The Batfleck movie. You know what I'm saying? With a with a thousand Snyder heads in there. Strong. You know what I'm saying? Like, ready to watch this. And you got some haters sprinkled in there, too. Because you know they going to be there. You know what I'm saying? But look, just all in all, like, you know, I can't sit here and, like, you know, not respect what I'm seeing the MCU do for their fan base. That's that's the point that I'm making with this, right? Like we have to get to a point where uh, us as DC fans can start to get that same kind of treatment, yo, because we deserve it. You know what I'm saying? Like this fan base is divided, right? And you know, there's moments like this where I think that you know we could all just kind of look and say yo this is the kind of treatment that we deserve you know and i don't think that, that that's asking too much right so you know that's kind of what i wanted to come on here and talk about you know um i liked the movie right um did i have a couple problems with it you know danny elfman and the fact that i felt like it should have been longer um, you know, but that was pretty much it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, look, I get back at y'all with the next one. You know what I'm saying I'm going live tomorrow. About to announce what the topic is in a little bit. And uh, I'm about to actually drop this footage because if you stay through, I'm about to see. Yeah, yeah, man, this Kevin Feige and shit. Excuse me. This Kevin Feige and Sam Raimi stuff was crazy, yo. It was super un expected you know but that's just what happens when you be at the chinese theater you know imax opening weekend you know what i'm saying that's how that's how we get down so look i'm gonna get at y'all next time you know what i'm saying we're gonna chop it up y'all already know much love and respect appreciation love y'all man catch y'all next time peace Richie Palmer and Eric Carroll in the big round of applause. Say hi to our editor, Bob Morowski, who's the genius.
behind so many of your favorite films, our screenwriter, Michael Waldron, our incredible composer, Danny Elfman, and the one and only, Mr. Sam Raimi. Guys, this is the best theater in town, and it is an honor to uh, stand here. And uh, I've said this before, but my career started watching Bob Morawski and certainly Sam Raimi make those first Spider-Man films. And I was quiet, and I sat and I learned. And I hope they're back in the MCU, and it's uh, a humbling dream. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you, everybody, for coming out on our first Friday night for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Really love to have you guys here. And we want you to know we appreciate your patronage to the show and everybody here worked really hard on the, on the movie to make it something special. We hope you enjoy it. Thank you! Thank you, everybody. Um, I love this movie. I hope you like the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy the show, everybody. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you.